I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it and this has been like a therapy session. Razabani for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Delighted to have with me on Zoom after a little while. Uh, Amir Abdullah. Amir, firstly, uh, great to see you. Uh, how are we doing? Uh, it's great to see you also, brother. Good to see you. Asalaamu Alaikum. Thank you for having me on. Um, obviously, recently appointed, uh, teamed up with Skills Challenge Entertainment uh, in, in Saudi Arabia. You're, you're head of boxing, I believe. Just talk to me through that process on, on, on how you left Las Vegas and, and moved to Saudi Arabia for, for now? Uh, well, I, I haven't moved here permanently yet. I'm still based in Las Vegas, but um, I've had a, uh, I've had a relationship with, uh, you know, some of the people around Prince Khalid uh, 2017. Uh, I think when, when, we, when we looked back actually the other day, we were looking back when the first messages were and, uh, and, you know, I had a good relationship with the people around him and, and some of, uh, you know, my close friends introduced me to some closer friends of his also. Um, and, uh, and you, know, as time went on, you know, we were in the same circle, of course, as you know, Prince Khaled is an avid, avid supporter of boxing. He loves the sport, um, loves, you know, the fighters loves to put on big events and, um, and, you know, we were in the same circles uh, several times and, uh, you know, kind of, everything just kind of gravitated towards each other. Uh, they gave us the opportunity to have Badu Jack on the last car, the Rage of the Red Sea between, uh, AJ Usyk. And, uh, and, you know, we, we, we clicked as soon as, you know, we were in the rooms together and we were talking and, you know, time went on and, and uh, he called me and, you know, we, we started talking about, you know, skill challenge and, you know, what, what the evolution of it could look like. And, um, and that's when he asked to bring me aboard and it was the biggest honor of my life. You know, I, it was just, you know, this is, this is, you know, everything that we've been working for was this is, you know, to be able to, to build a promotion of this magnitude in the Middle East. Um, and I say this, you know, with utmost respect to everybody, but, you know, especially if it's, you know, a Muslim based um, uh, a country and, and to be able to put on uh, events globally around the world that are, you know, that, are, that, that promote the sport of boxing at all levels. And of course, you know, Prince Khalid does everything big. He does everything, you know, just out of the world. And, and some of the stuff that he was telling me, I said, your highness, I go, that's crazy what you're thinking about. And he said, that's what I want to do. And I said, I'd, I'd love it. Let's do it. And we shook hands and uh, and here we are. Your ambition and your sacrifice. I know you have a very young family recently had, a, had another baby as well. So I know you've been in Saudi for a number of weeks now. I'm not sure how long you're going to stay in Saudi, but just from a personal level, a lot of sacrifice required from you to, to grow the brand and, and boxing awareness in, in Saudi Arabia. I, I appreciate it you saying that look i mean i never bring my personal life into you know those kinds of situations because i have a wonderful wife alhamdulillah that understands that you know everything that i work for and everything we sacrifice together because when i'm away from home that's a sacrifice for her as well um that you know we're, we're trying to build something bigger and, and, and you know, the scale and, and i told her i said this is the vision that prince Khaled has and and you know we're, we're all aligned with it um but you know every morning i have breakfast with my kids via zoom um, you know, we're, we're alhamdulillah, a very tight knit family. And, you know, I, I never miss birthdays. I missed my first birthday ever, um, last month. I've been here for almost two months now, but you know what, uh, there, there's no balance when it comes to, when it comes to chasing your dream and, you know, everything else next to it, there is no balance. You're either all in or you're not, and I'm all in and, and, you know, uh, we are making sacrifices. We'll continue to make sacrifices. And, you know, that's just a part of, you know, the, the journey that we're on. And uh, I believe in this vision. I believe in the goal. My wife and my family support me 100%. Uh, yesterday, Prince Khaled, you know, he dropped a bomb on me and he said, you know, I'm, I'm, I wanted to do this behind your back. Um, but, uh, you know, I have to, you know, talk to you about it because I want your family here. I want them to see what you sacrificed. I want them to, I want your daughters. And man, it hit me. I mean, it hit me, you know, and I try not to get emotional in front of anybody, especially another man. But he said, I want your daughters to sit in the crowd and watch what their father did. He goes, and, you know, and that was just, it's unbelievable. But, you know, that's also a testament of who he is uh, in that, you know, this is his vision. This is his country. This is, you know, his baby. It's his goal. It's his promotion. It's his everything. And he says, no, I want your family to see what, what you sacrificed. And that's why I love him. And that's why I love working, you know, side by side with him. Uh, he hates when I say working underneath him, but 
uh, working, you know, on his team. And, um, and it just, you know, I always say this, man, uh, uh, an army of sheep led by a lion will always defeat an army of lions led by a sheep. And, you know, he is a lion as a leader. When he walks into the office, his presence is so felt, you know, he makes decisive decisions. He's, you know, he's two or three steps ahead of 99% of the people. And, and he's one of the most humble men I've ever met in my life. And yesterday he really humbled me, but kind of went off course here. But all in all, that's why I think, that's why not I think I know that I make the sacrifices that I do and my family does because, you know, we're aligned with a man that has a vision greater than just boxing. Okay. And it gives me tremendous honor to do that. Obviously, Saudi entered the market with AJ Ruiz, the, the rematch in Diria uh, a number of years ago. Mm -hmm. Since then, they've had a couple of more wins. But this one's a bit different. This is not just, you know, real, real boxing. You know, people would would, would, would have different opinions on Jake Paul. But this is a Jake Paul main event. I know you have Badu Jack and Maccabi on, on the undercard. Yeah. But how much influence has someone like Jake Paul had on boxing and the region of Saudi Arabia? Well, look, here, here's the thing. Like, you know, I had the rights for Jake Paul versus Anderson Silva here in Saudi. And I had pitched the fight. And at that point, you know, Prince Khalid wasn't into having, you know, influencers fight MMA guys. And, you know, he's just not, in, he's a boxing purist. He loves boxing. He loves, you know, a, a good competitive fight. He loves, he loves the real, and I hate to call it real boxing, but it is. It's the boxing that we all knew prior to the uh, KSI Logan Paul fight. And so when I pitched it, you know, he kind of dismissed it and said, this is not the time for it. But then when the, the uh, opportunity for Jake to fight a legitimate fighter, and I use that word not because of his skills or because of you know anything other than the fact that this guy is not an influencer turned boxer. This is a guy that comes from, first of all, boxing royalty and the Fury family. Uh, secondly, that's all he's been doing is boxing. And thirdly, you know, he's a, he's, he hasn't done anything outside of that. So when that opportunity came, uh, and Prince Khaled looked at it. He said, you know what? That's a fight that I wanted to do. And uh, he said, on top of that, you know, I want to put a great card together. He said, what do you think about another fight? Uh, what do you think about a Badu Jack fight? And I said, I would love it. I said, he goes, what's the biggest fight out there for Badu? I says, with Alunga Makabu, WBC, uh, cruiserweight title. He goes, make it happen. I said, yes, sir. And we went to work. Uh, the fight card was put together within a couple of weeks. It was really very easy negotiations. Um, you know, plenty of credit to, you know, Jake Paul and his team, Nikisa and MVP, uh, George Warren over at Queensbury. You know, of course, with every negotiation, you have, you know, hurdles and everything, but everybody was aligned. Everybody wanted it to happen. And then, you know, Badu and uh, Don King, uh, I thought that would have been a nightmare, but Don was very easy to work with. He loved, he wanted to come into Saudi. Um, it, it was a pleasure working with Carl and his team and, 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 we, and, and Doc and, you know, everybody made it work. What, what do you make of, of WBC coming out stating that if, if Jake Paul was to win, he will get a ranking within the WBC? A lot of professional fighters have, have laughed at that. I know there were rumours that it was top 15, but it looks like it might be top 14 said. But either way, a lot of fighters were saying to you get a ranking because you beat someone like Tommy Fury, who's not, who hasn't done anything yet. So could you understand that argument? No, Reza, I understand the argument because when I take my promoter hat off and I put my fan hat on, I 100% agree with why wouldn't a guy that, you know, busted his butt through the amateurs, developed a, such a strong pedigree of amateur tournaments, everything from the local club shows to regionals to Golden Gloves or, you know, internationally, whatever it may be, uh, to, you know, international fights, um, turning pro, going through that whole, you know, uh, song and dance of, you know, how, what a fighter should be coming up and then not being able to have the opportunity that Jake Paul has. Now, on the other side of that, Jake Paul also, and look, I'm, I'm very, you know, uh, I'm very neutral about this. Jake Paul also, in his first six fights, has taken riskier fights than any other established champion that we know. He's fought more tested guys than anybody. Look at the first 10 guys that and, and not to pick them out and not even to, you know, to, to shed any kind of light on it, but it's the truth. Look at any of the first 10 guys, any of the current champions have fought and look at, you know, the risks that Jake Paul has taken. They're far greater than that from a financial point of view. And this is where my promoter hat comes on. And maybe the WBC is looking at it that way. Financially, what Jake Paul fights generate 
real professional boxing fights are much more than most of the guys that fight. So I think it's an anomaly. I think that, you know, Jake, you can't categorize Jake Paul in the same category as the rest of the fighters because what he brings to the table. Look, let me ask you this, Raz, and you've been around a long time and IFL is a very established uh, uh, media outlet. How many six and oh guys are being called out by world champions? How many guys at six and oh are even on the radar? I've got new guys that are coming up. You don't even know their names if I mentioned them to you. And they're legitimate guys. And they went through the whole amateur thing, the whole amateur program. They went through, you know, the pros, they went their whole lives, they've been doing this. So Jake at six and oh is being called out because he's a somebody. And when you fight Jake Paul, you win the Jake Paul lottery. Um, and, and you get to be put on a massive stage and there's a ton of publicity and there's a ton of financial upside, you know, that, that, that goes along with it. So I, I'm not sure if the same rules apply to Jake that apply to everybody else. And I say that with a very heavy heart because I'm a boxing fan and I'm a boxing guy. Um, but it's the truth, you know, that he, his rules don't apply. And, and, and I agree. And I agree that, you know, the WBC should consider it. All sanctioned bodies should consider it. The WBA wanted to give him a belt. You know, his, 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 the same rules don't apply. And I get that fans are angry. I get it. Believe me. And I, I can testify with that. And then, you know, I, I, I understand it is, you know, he's this YouTube guy that's coming over fighting MMA guys up until this point, but you know who he is and you know who he is because of who he is. There might be a new set of rules that are made for that. I mean, talk about the uh, concept of going on Sunday, uh, rather than a Saturday, um, Saturday night. Uh, yeah, you know, the, uh, and, and we looked at this, and, and there's a lot of factors that took place. And, and you know, uh, Saudi uh, has a lot of sporting events going on. They want to make sure that they give this fight the attention that it deserves. And Saturday didn't fit the bill. You know, it had to have been on a Sunday. I think it's great to start putting fights on a Sunday. You know, people love to be home. Uh, they're watching. You know, the football season's over now. Uh, you know, they're watching sporting events. Of course, you know, we're, we're programmed that a Saturday night fight is great, but it was a Sunday afternoon, prime time. You know, Jake's ring walk is estimated to be about one o'clock a.m. here in Saudi, which is two o'clock p.m. on the West Coast in the United States. Um, you know, it's early evening in, uh, in London, um, you know, 4 p.m. Uh, on the East Coast. You know, it works, works. Um, but more important than that is, you know, uh, wanted to give it the, the attention that it deserved in Saturday wouldn't have worked. I mean, just, just going away from the fight that you have next week, uh, I know Saudi Arabia were desperate to hold the undisputed heavyweight clash, whether that was Joshua Fury or whether it was Fury Usyk. Um, Bob Arum has come out, Frank Warren has come out, and it seems like it's not going to land in Saudi Arabia. Um, I'm not sure whether you had any part in any of those conversations. It looks like it might land in London now, which... You know, UK fans are absolutely thrilled, but um, why could that not work in Saudi Arabia? Well, there's a couple of things, and respectfully, Raza, I, I would like to correct you on something. If Saudi Arabia is desperate to do something, I wouldn't use the word desperate. If they're inclined to do something, they're going to do it. And there, there, there are very few obstacles when, you know, you have people of that kind of power, and especially if Prince Khalid had wanted it to happen indecisively and, you know, without kind of, you know, reservations, it would have happened. I want to make sure I'm very clear on that. And I think all of the parties were very clear on that. So one, if, if Prince Khalid totally makes a decision that he wants to do it, it's going to happen. That's just how these fights work. Uh, two is uh, why it didn't happen in my role in this. You know, when I came on board, and this is my first fight that I'm coming on board, there was already so many people involved with that fight, uh, with all of the, you know, the guarantees, the promises, the purse splits, uh, the financial guarantees um, that uh, that you know we made a decision that you know let that fight play out and either come to fruition or dissolve on its own and then moving forward I would handle you know all of the fights moving forward and I think everybody unanimously agreed on that and I'm very comfortable with that because you know me getting involved now and going back six months and and talking about you know who promised what, what would have contract, it would have slowed up the process. We're already coming up to a time where it's, you know, they have to fight or, you know, move on from that. Uh, three, is it landing in, in the UK? I think that fight should be in the UK. I mean, I think that that's a fight where, you know, in the US, there is not going to have that much drawing power. Um, you know, Tyson Fury has certainly made a name for himself, but his big name, you're never going to put 80,000 people in an arena in the United States with Tyson Fury. 
the UK is where that fight should land. I think it makes a lot of sense for it to be there. Of course, if Saudi wanted it to happen, then it would have been here and that would have been a great fight also. But I think the UK is a great place for them to happen. I have a great relationship with Bob Aram and Top Rank. We have a good relationship um, you know, with, with Queensberry also. Um, so I wish them the best of luck and, and hopefully it turns out to be a great event. You never know. There could be a future rematch here. There could be a future potential fight here. But um, I, I think that the reports are accurate and that they're moving on to London. And, and that's where the fight's happening April 29th. And, you know, uh, I'll be calling to make sure that I get my tickets. No, absolutely. Thank you for clarifying that. Uh, and I mean, also, you know, in Saudi Arabia, you, the events that you have put on, they're, they're big events, i.e. Joshua, we had Joshua Ruiz, we had Joshua Uzi. These were huge events. Now, we saw Abu Dhabi uh, a number of months ago where Bivol fought Ramirez there. It's a, a kind of a more low-key fight. Are schools challenge also going to put, in the most respectful way, um, kind of smaller shows as well and, and grow the sport that way? Well, you know, and that's the vision of Prince Khalid. Is he loves the big fights, but he also heavily believes in the grassroots building of Saudi Arabian boxing, which is why on this card, on such a big stage, he has four Saudi prospects on it. You have three on the prelims, and then you have the return of the Saudi uh, a pro, Ziad Mayouf, uh, who's coming back. He's 1-0 now. Uh, he'll be making his second, uh, he'll have a second pro fight on the card. So Prince Khalid understands what, the grassroots of the Saudi boxing entails and the attention that it needs to be able to build off of that, which means that you can't always have AJ Usyk fights. You can't always have these big cards. And I believe this week, uh, fight week, Prince Khalid is going to announce something very special um, regarding that. Just generally the region, I know there's a lot of money in the Middle East and we saw Dubai hold events. We've seen Abu Dhabi and Yas Island. We've seen Saudi Arabia. There's rumors about Qatar now as well coming into the market now. So is it getting spicy in that region? Now? Is it because we know when the Arabs uh, get involved, they, they they want to win at all times. Uh, again, I think there's going to be a lot of exciting news that are coming. That's going to come from uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, from Prince Fahad, from Skill Challenge, and alignment with a lot of these uh, promotions that you're talking about. We're very proud, and I think I can speak confidently, not that I ever would, uh, I speak very confidently on behalf of Prince Khalid in that every neighboring country that puts on boxing that's good for the sport, we are absolutely behind. You saw Prince Khalid was in Abu Dhabi. He was ringside for the Bivol fight. Um, he's a big fan of you know uh, boxing on all levels. He goes to Vegas to support boxing. He goes to New York to support boxing. He goes to he'll, he'll go to Abu, he went to Abu Dhabi to support boxing. So he's a fan of boxing, and that's what I love about him. He's not reserved in his own lane. He wants to enhance the sport, bring the sport together, and just put on the biggest best fights. And again, I think in these next coming weeks, especially next week. You're going to hear some great uh, and insightful information from Prince Khalid that's going to align that messaging. Okay, Amir, thank you for giving me a, a little bit of your of your time today over Zoom. Um, is there any final message, any final words you'd like to add before we conclude? Raz, are you still with me? Yeah, I am. Can you hear me? Yeah, there you go. I said, yeah. The just... first thing I would do is ask to maybe give you a better Wi-Fi there in uh, in your apartment. It would probably you probably qualify for a higher speed Wi-Fi. And I have no problem talking to him. I have a good relationship with him. Maybe we can put in for a little bit of a bonus to increase your Wi-Fi speed. Uh, secondly, I want everybody to tune in. It's going to be a great fight. February 26th, you know, it's called the truth. The talk is over. Diria Saudi Arabia, Jake Paul, Tommy Fury. Um, it'll be on BT in the United Kingdom, ESPN in the US, and shown over 175 uh, countries globally. Uh, it's going to be a great fight. And of course, how can you miss with a co-feature of Badu Jack and the Lunga Makabu WBC fight? And you've got you know a bunch of other great fights also. Ziad Mayouf, Mohsen Kaysen, US prospect, the Muslim boxer, uh, undefeated cruiserweight. Uh, you've got Adam Saleh, an influencer that's on there. He's fighting on the card as well. We've got some great fights that are going to be taking place. The three Saudi prospects, so we're looking forward to it. Uh, Bedr Asimadine, who's one of the region's up-and-coming prospects, he's undefeated. I think he's 10-0 and now, 8-0. and um, He'll be back on. It'll be a great night of fights overall. So I appreciate the support and uh, looking forward to bigger and better things coming out of the kingdom. Amir Abdullah for IFL TV, thank you very much. Thank you, brother. Away from me, and this has been like a therapy session.